If you are interested in starting your own podcast, we use Buzzsprout because it is simple and easy to use. Buzzsprout can get your show listed on every major platform while giving you the resources for a great podcast website, audio players that can drop into other websites, detailed analytics to see how people are listening to your podcast, and tools to promote your episodes. Podcasting isn't hard when you have the right partners, and that is why over 100,000 podcasters are already subscribed to Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Following the link in our episode descriptions lets Buzzsprout know that we sent you. So in return, you will receive a $20 Amazon gift card from Buzzsprout while signing up for a paid plan. Most importantly, every subscription through our link is always appreciated and helps support our show so we can continue delivering the quality content that you guys listen to. That being said, back to the show. Hello, and welcome to Comic Book Junkies. I'm Andrew. This is Joe. And we're back at you with another topic. So yeah, this time, if you heard last time, we're going to be creating and pitching our characters to you. And then, you know, after that, we're going to kind of go ahead and discuss like if we were able to, you know, ask a question to our favorite superhero or one of our favorite superheroes, what would it be? So yeah, it's going to be a real fun one. It's going to be a little different. My stuff's a a bit goofy. I know Joe's rip roaring and ready to go. He's very pumped. Isn't that right, Joe? Pumped. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool well it's the noise that, i make when i uh lift weights and dump and <laughs> a couple <laughs> other things too but uh <laughs> well since you're grunting and you're so ready do you want to introduce us to your brand spanking new character or... yeah i'll start so i created a hero with this own like origin story sidekick villain the works all right you're not getting all that out of me all during my lunch break at work it was a stroke of genius that hit me when I was eating Pancheros. So, drum roll. Okay. Nope. Not All right. Now. My hero, his name is Sensor. Okay. He's Uh-oh. a hunter that lives in the forest. He's kind of like a more modern Tarzan. So, someone that's not like completely out of sync with humans, being smart enough to like take advantage of their resources while also being in sync with like nature and doing everything he can to like coexist and preserve it. So think of like Deathstroke met Commandi met Animal Man. So dude's got a lot of swagger. He's a young adult like Nightwing. So some of his superpowers, 2020 vision for sure. Like his senses are all enhanced, hence sensor. He can hear even stronger than Superman, super smell. So he uses that for tracking stuff. Ah, I hope he doesn't mission. smell any shits. <laughs> 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 Fucking knock it, that guy out. Yep. Super taste. So immune to poisons even and has access to like every flavor out there and super touch so like can feel like minute details and things as well as like harden or like callous his skin in order to prevent like damage and impact so the origin being this dude sensor is born with these powers and when he's old enough his parents feel comfortable letting him live in the wild and So he wasn't born in it or raised in it, but he adopted it, right? And they let him free to explore the wilderness and live in it. And it was then that Sensor came in contact with the Council of the Animal Kingdom. So each species of animal has like some kind of alpha representation, like like King Monkey. and Like like Noah's Ark, but government. Yes, and he represents <laughs> all of them and all of their domains in this kingdom. So Whoa. they train him to be their protector. And they saw that as valuable because he can coexist with them while also communicate with humans and just help everybody out. Right. And so he's got a villain, though, and its name is Resource. So, oh. yeah, this dude depletes energy from the elements like earth, fire, wind and water. The more life he takes away from things, the stronger he gets. It's not even to survive. Like, he doesn't need this to, or he'll, like, shrivel away. Dude just likes being a jerk. He's really strong, big, and mean. And Resource's origin includes a lab accident that happened to him. So he he had his own lab in the wilderness, right? And there was an explosion. And Sensor was able to basically scoop in and try to help at the last minute because he sent some danger probably got the tip from one of the animals running kind of like the smokes making all these like animals go crazy right and he was able to save the lab assistant 
but not resource. And so resource swear after he got this accident from the lab explosion to just basically destroy nature. So this dude's trying to set up like Walmarts and gas stations all over the domains. And <laughs> and he works uh, with BP. He works. <laughs> <laughs> he chucks oil on small birds, <laughs> especially because sensor tried to save him, but he just couldn't save two people at once at the time. So that being said, Luckily, Sensor has a cool sidekick named Igor the Beavor. So, the Beavor? Yeah. So oh, it no floats shit. like a bee, but it's really a beaver. Cool. Think of like Batmite, but in the form of a beaver. So this thing's like pretty much useless, but like it's indestructible <laughs> too. <laughs> but when you say and, Beavor, it sounds like it's like a like a Voltron, like <laughs> it's, it's just a robotic Batmite. beaver. Yeah. Just like companionship. Beavor. Um, just somebody to do adventures with and stuff. And... Beavor was big in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. But My yeah, big. pretty much invincible. So uh, he could send Igor into combat without having to worry about it. But he also doesn't expect much. But Igor is pretty eager to help out. So he's yeah. eager. He's an Igor Beavor. <laughs> Damn, bro. You're yeah. Slick. So that that's my uh that's my comic book that's pretty sick that's way more fleshed out than what i'm about to like crap out on a plate for you that's very cool i like that idea the, now did you have any like costume ideas since you've so fleshed out like you mentioned you know i mean is he like a maybe you don't i mean i'm not trying to put you on the spot but you mentioned like slade Kamandi, you know people like that i mean is he does he wear a mask or is he just like tarzaning it kind of like a loincloth maybe maybe he doesn't wear animal pelts though since he's like boys with thinking everyone like deathstroke but without the mask does he have the frilly swashbuckler boots to be determined those are sick that should be a prereq but uh cool does he have a color scheme though or is he like pretty brown green you know nature or... <laughs> pretty brown <laughs> down with brown uh no i don't know I mean, camo would be sick. I guess I didn't get that far, but I was just thinking about all these different like ongoings where he could like, yeah. you know, visit like the monkey kingdom all the way to you know, wherever. Cool. Yeah. You put some thought into this. Mine are more like quick elevator pitches of like stuff from my dumb mind. <laughs> so <laughs> unfortunately, I can't flesh anything out in front of you. This is um, all burrito could... thoughts. Nice. Mine is... uh. One of them is is from the the group chat, but the other two were literally just me sitting there with my like warped sense of thinking. So we'll start off uh, with mine real quick. So this one we didn't flesh out, but, you know, shout out Charlie. If and when he does listen to this, I bet you won't. You bastard. (laughs) (laughs) Real Um, friends. Real friends. But uh, the first one is the keyboard warrior. Now, I'm sure this isn't like very. uh, (laughs) <laughs> original <laughs> um this is uh shadow bandrew uh <laughs> this is alter ego <laughs> no way <laughs> yeah so basically the keyboard warrior he he got fleshed out the least but you know kind of a basis is he's kind of a troll so he could be kind of an anti-hero usually i would say he would troll for good but like when he rolls up in person he'll beat your ass um so the keyboard warrior can do uh I mean, basically anything a troll would do online, he'll do in front of you. (laughs) (laughs) So that alone is a superpower because most people are pretty cowardly and won't back up the, you know, screen talk. Keyboard warrior does. And then you don't want to really mess with the keyboard warrior, though. So you kind of want to cool tensions with him because he's got like a titanium keyboard that he could just crack you with. You don't want to get beat down by the titanium keyboard. And also, he knows how to track people via internet. Like, he doesn't have to pull up IP addresses or nothing. He just kind of knows, dude. He's part internet. He's the keyboard warrior. The keyboard warrior sounds pretty uh mean. Yeah, keyboard warrior is not really a great guy. Like, literally, I'll tell you right now, my notes for keyboard warrior is literally just keyboard warrior. And I'm just staring at it and just trying to remember exactly how we could flesh him out. So bear with me. I have two more. Like I said, these are a little bit quicker. So let's see. These are both so juvenile, too. Oh, man, I can't believe I'm about to. Oh, let's hear it. I can't wait to explain these. Okay. So then we also have the brown streak. They need explanation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the The brown streak, dude. Okay. So first and foremost, he has probably the best superpower, the ability to no wipe. Thought of a color scheme for the character? 
No, I haven't thought about it actually. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm thinking brown. But uh I don't know, we'll see. It depends on the day. <laughs> it depends on what he eats. <laughs> Why is he always half corn? <laughs> Ability to Did, know what does this coexist in the same universe as the keyboard warrior? We're working on that. It could be because he's definitely going to be in the same universe as the other superhero that I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> but uh, I got three powers for the brown streak at the moment. The ability to know wipe. Um, that one's just very practical. You could just does his business and stands up, doesn't have to worry about it because he's got control over that type of stuff. Um, now, is it clean? Is it like a or is it like a dog where they don't wipe, but they just no, it, it's clean. Like normal humans can do this, too. I've done it before. <laughs> okay. If you, you've you never taken a dump and then just not like obviously you wipe to check. But when you check, it turns out you didn't even need to. Have you ever had that? It's far and few between. Dude. I mean, it's exceptionally rare. But it is possible. He can it just do possible. it all the time. Yeah. He does it all the time. He just dumps and then gets up and he's clean. He's not like a dog. But uh, second power. So this one isn't like solely him. He has to be sitting on a toilet. But basically, once he sits upon any toilet, he can travel at near instant super speed on that toilet. Now, he doesn't just teleport. Toilet moves, dude. It's like a bullet train. Wherever. <laughs> so this dude sits down. Is it kind of like that chair that Batman sits in? Like the Mobius chair? Yeah. It's like that. But a toilet? Yeah. It's like that, but literally any toilet. So he could just be in public anywhere. And then like he'll probably bust through a wall or something. You'll probably see pipes burst because of the toilet just zipping away, dude. <laughs> Cut up and left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd be so mad if he has to use my restroom and then I had to pay thousands of dollars to get my bathroom redone. He comes to my bathroom and then you just see him bust out of the back of my house. And I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> Dog, I cry. Like, better cover that. Yeah. I don't... Oh, God. <laughs> Someone's getting, like, I'm filing a claim with my insurance. Is the brown streak a hero or a villain? Hero. So uh, don't worry, because not only can he no wipe and he can travel at super speed when sitting upon a toilet, he's got to do something on the offensive. And trust me, you don't want to get hit with it. So <laughs> no. So dude will throw something that I like to call the poo poo punch. And uh, wherever it makes contact, it leaves like a little stinky brown stain. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. So not only <laughs> is like this guy coming on like a bullet train toilet at you, but if he punches you, you're going to like, it's going to hurt and it's going to smell and <laughs> might get an infection if he punches you in the mouth. I don't no. know. <laughs> yeah. So you don't want to mess with the brown streak. Typically, he's fighting like evil, like plumbers, you know, burrito chain employees, stuff like that. People who would probably cause unrest to the bowels of the innocent. <laughs> you got to watch out for the brown streak unless he's on your side. Then you want him. Or well, you don't want him around, but if you need him, you'd welcome it. <laughs> cool. Um, and now for the last one, potentially my favorite. Now, I think these two share a universe. He could be a villain if you want. He could also just be a superhero. This one's a little up in the air. I mean, to somebody, he's definitely the villain. <laughs> so his name is No Balls. Yeah, No Balls, dude. So he also has a useful thing, like similar to no wiping. He has the ability to retract his balls. So he is invulnerable to nut shots. Pretty sick. And now I'll, I'll do you one better. No Balls has the complete ability to manipulate and even make balls disappear. What? He has where, where did he get this power? Chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just grew up next to like a 5G cell phone tower. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and put, put his nuts in the puddle one time and more or less, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, so you don't want to cross him, dude, because he could turn, you know, like energy or like matter manipulation. Like he could turn your balls into like eggs or he <laughs> straight up. If he really doesn't like you, he could just like straight up make them disappear like empty, empty ball bag. Don't want that. So he's he's a kind of a menace. Um, now, if you destroy him, do you get your balls back or does no, he dude. have to give you your balls back? Yeah. Yeah, he has gotcha. complete. He's the only one with power over. So this. you wouldn't want to kill him until you get your balls back. Yeah, otherwise and you're I don't, like stuck without him. I don't know that you can kill him if he takes your nuts, or like if you come at him, he could turn your nuts into like bowling balls, and then you're not going to be able to go nowhere. <laughs> 
<laughs> See what I'm saying? No balls is a menace. So he might actually be a villain, but that also depends on his last, his final third power. He has the power to influence people into action or non-action by the phrase no balls. So it kind of depends on the tone. So, you know, when he wants to like rev someone up, you know, kind of get them flustered and, you know, do it like be like, no balls, dude. And then the dude's like, what? You saying I got no balls? He's like, yeah, dude, no balls. And he's like, oh, fine, I'll show you. So <laughs> he can use that to trick people into fighting him. And then he'll go ahead and like, you know, obviously use that to his advantage because no balls is a genius. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't have to be, <laughs> but he kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> um and then vice versa he could be like real stern and say fucking no balls and be, they'll be like whoa 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 i'm not yeah so no balls what, is like what if got he power fights a yeah female then he's just you a get man. that far <laughs> he's so just what? a man best he can do when he fights a female is retract his balls so she can't kick him in them he's gonna so retract he, his own balls he can retract his own balls he's he's got mastery of balls like he sees a woman come up to him and she's about to be like that's my purse. I don't know you. And it's about to kick him in the balls. Those boys are just they're like up in his tummy or fucking wherever he puts them, dude. He's got complete control. He's just like, no, you won't. <laughs> now, did they go inside did... of him or did they go like somewhere else on the body? Like, can he? It's up to, it's up to him, dude. I mean, I would imagine that he's just retracting them inside because, you know, they're hanging and then just just up in there, dude. But they, they exist or are they just? Oh, disappear? they exist. They exist, but he. Well, has I mean, con- like, let's say, like, he retracts it, but then somebody yeah. hits him with a cannonball in his tummy. But he strategically put his balls in his tummy. Like, can, he can you move him around, dude? I mean, what if you caught him off it- guard, can you get? You his can balls? still hit him in the balls, but you got to catch him off guard. He's gotcha. gonna be thinking like in the moment, like, oh, you know, he's still kind of seeing like, whoa. They're throwing a kick at my stomach, and then he just drops them down a little bit again. They're just going up and down, like, nonstop. (laughs) No, I don't. (laughs) Uh, But, yeah, I mean, uh, those are my three. Sound off in the comments. (laughs) (laughs) Man, I'm so mad. About what? My character can't coexist in the same universe as your characters. Why couldn't he, bro? He just couldn't hit no balls in the balls, and the brown streak would take a toilet into the jungle and, like, find him. A toilet into the jungle? Uh, you none saw of them that... people no wipe anyway. Animals don't I mean. matter. Well, well, yeah, none of the animals wipe, but, I mean, he could still hit him with the poo-poo punch, and he could travel there if he has to on that toilet, and, you know, kind of, like, throwback, like, Spongebob, you know, when they rode that rock, they're like, this is what pioneers used to do, and, like, that rock just be, like, etching through the sand, like, that's kind of what the toilet does. It's like breaking up, like, the street it's on, (laughs) because it's going so fast. It's just a harsh-ass toilet, dude, just flying around. Well, not flying, it's on the ground, but... (laughs) Is there any chance... Of the Justice League with your characters, maybe not the main chapter. Yeah, but like, <laughs> can they create their own Justice League? Maybe mm, <laughs> they could. I don't know. If the balls in the poop guy, <laughs> the brown streak, and no balls. What they're gonna do together? <laughs> Nothing good. I could tell you that much. The keyboard warrior. I feel like these guys are all kind of villains. <laughs> now that I've pitched them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, maybe not the the brown streak. The keyboard warrior and no balls, though, kind of in the middle middle there. Depends on the day for them. Depends on the day for the brown streak for other things. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. That was a good. That was a good little uh, exercise. Exercise. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Well, uh, you want to move on to our final segment. Well, yeah, of, <laughs> two of two final. I, uh, I took the question is if you could ask a superhero one question, what it would be. Not my favorite. So forgive Word. me if I took a different approach again. No, but... I'd be I do that all the time. So I would first ask if they're open to a sidekick or if they have any other hero friends looking for one with the understanding that I'm getting good pay and benefits. If all that checks out, we're cool. But if they say it doesn't come with pay and benefits, I I would then probably ask what fuels them to continue to put their life on the line, knowing they could die at any time or even worse, without pay and benefits, go bankrupt. And I guess depending on the superhero I'm talking to, I may even ask like who their toughest or weakest villain that they faced or hero that they faced or maybe even like their favorite or least favorite hero that they've teamed up with i think that'd be kind of cool maybe ask uh 
how they went from being somebody with superpowers to becoming a superhero. Like, were they recruited? Maybe, maybe I might ask if they have any life advice for us normies. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they're just... real well adjusted and in touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, maybe even favorite part of their job, or do they plan on retirement? I had a few questions. I think death is a retirement. Death is their retirement. Yeah, but like, let's but yeah, say those are like all... seventy. Are you still fighting, even though you got powers, or are you like? Well, Batman's not, but Superman is. Yeah, I don't know. That's good. Those like, are all good questions. When does it stop? I'm gonna keep saying when they die. <laughs> <laughs> well i mean is there an end point is mm, there a, that is there that's like what you should spot? ask them yeah we're like is, is there an end be, point like is it when all like the super gonna... villains are gone like and it's just normal crimes like what's the end goal mm. or do you just have to exist so that it doesn't get even worse and then at that point when do you retire yeah that's a tough one i don't know how they retire even like but I don't know I how many understand of them make the pay money. structure. Like, is it Batman paying them out? Is it Green Arrow? Like, it's probably a the government. Mm, no, not the government. That feels like a well, not for DC. It's not the government. Probably Marvel. It could be. There's so many. Ever everyone and their brother over there works with or near the government. Yeah, that's tough. Because I mean, really, like, how do you make money? Superman <laughs> probably needs Lois's supplemental income. She's technically got a better job than him. Cause like, <laughs> right, and like right. Bat- Batman's just rich. Green Arrow's rich, but like I don't. Well, Green Arrow's pretty left. He's probably okay with like bankrolling everyone. Batman's probably a bit more stingy. He probably only pays like minimum wage. Yeah, he pays like the bare minimum, like bottom of the barrel benefits. Like, like he's more than generous. Like when he's in the bat suit and like you're actually dying in front of him or something. But like uh, other than that, I feel like he's like a fortune like twenty company. He's like nah. Sorry, that's not in the fiscal plan this year. <laughs> Sorry, we're t- we're taking away one of the paid holidays, and everyone's like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> crime doesn't have the day off," and everyone's like, "Come on, Bruce." <laughs> yeah, I don't Green know. Arrow's like the union. Green Arrow is the union. He don't care, but they both lose all their money like every other week, and then somehow get it back. So they're probably pretty willy nilly with their money by now. I mean, Batman just funnels all his into like fucking street tanks and stuff instead of like orphanages or like social programs anyway so <laughs> who cares this is all R&D for getting things that he could throw and stick into like street level villains <laughs> 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 different ways to maim and injure but not kill like poor criminals <laughs> dude's just trying to steal a loaf of bread to feed their daughter and he's just like let me just fucking Hit send you to the, the ER yeah <laughs> he would dude he don't care as long as he doesn't shoot you with a gun he's <laughs> he's fine he'll hit you with the toilet over the head and be like you're fine yeah i so went up what, what, are you, what are you asking your favorite superhero yeah i went a bit more literal and i am asking captain marvel shazam for those who call him that still he's the captain by the way in the new book which is a leaps and bounds better than shazam i had a few questions the first one's a bit more meta because that's assuming that you know like i know everyone's secret identities and then i'm talking to like basically a 12 year old about him knowing someone else's secret identity but i'd ask him how are you more well adjusted than batman over losing your parents as kids especially nowadays we're always seeing batman like cry and moan about his parents and like being real sad and i mean he has every right to be but we're also talking about a 12 year old who had the same thing basically happen and he just doesn't talk about it very much and i don't know if that's because it was like the 40s and you know that's the thing to do is to not talk about your feelings but billy don't seem to give too much of a shit he's just living on his own as like a 12 year old working on a news station you don't see him sulking about what his parents would think about what he's doing he's just chilling bro um so i'd ask him how is he so well adjusted especially relative to batman (laughs) and then uh i mean it's probably something to do with his uh captain marvel powers like the wisdom of solomon but whatever. And then I'd also ask him uh, why is his uncle such a scoundrel? Because for those of you who don't know in like original continuity, yeah, we're not talking Uncle Dudley, but we're talking his like biological uncle, which like original continuity back in like Fawcett when his parents died, like they were actually pretty well off and Billy basically becomes like a street orphan because his uncle like steals the whole fortune away more or less and Billy gets nothing. 
So I'd ask him, why is he a scoundrel? And then like to follow up, I'd be like, as Captain Marvel, would you make him see the error of his ways? I mean, because Billy obviously is pure of heart, shouldn't be going for revenge. But at the same time, his uncle is a uh, ne'er-do-well who is a criminal technically. So would he ever bring his uncle in and be like and take him down because that's messed up? And yeah. And then also, I mean, it was like I said, times are different, but like the child labor laws and living on your own, because when he was like 12, he had like his own like little apartment and was just working for like a news, like a radio show for, for Fawcett. I don't know how how exactly all the or what is it? Radio whiz. Regardless, like I don't know how the hell all that works. Kids really well adjusted for being a preteen. But uh, I'd ask him a few of those questions. Because, I mean, obviously, if he's Captain Marvel, I mean, he's going to be pretty wise. He could probably answer most things. But, yeah, I don't I didn't have I obviously put a little bit more time into pitching my superheroes than like coming up with out of the box questions for this. But this was actually a little bit of a tougher exercise than even coming up with the heroes personally, just because I don't I don't even I'm not that inquisitive. I mean, I like to ask questions, but I'm not that inquisitive. I don't know what the hell to ask some of these like superheroes. Like I'd be like, oh, wow, cool. Instead of like, hey, what about this? But yeah. Those are the segments for today. You got anything you want to add to that, Joe? Only thing I'd say is, I guess if I was asking Superman a question, I would ask him why he doesn't do more than just bring Lex to jail. Not kill him, but you could like put him in the bottle with all the other Handorians or like, I feel like there's just so much more preventative measures you could do. It's up to truth, justice and the American way. You yeah. gotta believe in the court system, Joe. I, think, I know, but there's got to be like a like a line. Yeah, but we'll never find it. What I would ask him is, do you think Lex is super powered? He'd say literally no, but then he'd say he'd go on some like figurative rant about how he respects Lex in like a backhanded way. Probably say yes, but literally no. He'd just be like, no, he's smart as hell. He's just good human. Well, not a good human, but he's good at being human. <laughs> I would ask him. How the hell did he come up with his secret identity? Just him like hunching and wearing glasses and like, how the hell does, how did that work? Probably from being a high schooler, kind of blending in. School. Yeah, I guess. But like, you know, just a slight change, like the glasses really like, oh yeah, that's not Superman. Like he thought like that would be enough. He figured out that that was good. It worked, but I digress. Regardless. That's our episode for today. You know where to find us. CBJ Pod on Instagram, Comic Book Junkies on YouTube, Facebook. You know our logo. You'll see it there. If you're new here, welcome. We're glad to have you. But rating, reviewing, subscribing, anything like that, you know, the typical spiel helps the algorithm, which helps us. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't, you know, ask you for it. But, you know, spread the good word. Let people know about us and, you know, do that for any podcast that you enjoy truly. But, yeah, I mean, other than that, we appreciate you guys for listening and we will catch you next time. Thanks, guys.